Salutations, I'm Jessco, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the live stream today, we are going to, well, I'm going to be showcasing how I create my tutorials. Now, obviously, this is not going to be from absolute zero. This is going to showcase after I've already done some preparation. So, first things first. Let's load up my script. Um, view. Wait, God damn it. Screw it. Okay, so as you can see my script, I pretty much say right exactly what I say in my videos. This allows it so that I can easily upload this along with the video all right there we go stream health there we go so it looks like the stream health has improved massively so we can continue on I'm uh, not sure how much of the previous section you guys caught but let me just go back over it. I have a script where I read everything. And it's exactly what you hear in the stream or in the videos. So now I have a C sharp project open in CryEngine. And the very first thing we're going to do is open our example level. And eventually, don't you dare crash. There, okay. So we can take a look and we have a very standard sky. It comes zoom speed. There we go. So it's around noon. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover the first way of changing yeah, I fixed that. <laughs> I changed... Uh, I changed uh, which... Uh, VPN server I'm on. Okay, so the first one. We're going to click on Tools. And then we're going to click on Environment Editor. As you can see, mine's set up in a weird fashion, more longitudinal. So what you want to do is you want to look at down here at the very bottom. We see start, current, speed, force, sky update, and end. What we're going to do is we're going to change from 12 o'clock noon to, uh, let's go at 4 o'clock. And immediately the sky updated. So that's exactly what we want. Now, pay attention here. In the environment editor, libs, environment presets, example, XML, pretty much everything is handled from the environment editor in XML, which actually leads us into our second option of modifying the sky. So I'm going to save the project first. And now I'm going to pull up the CryEngine Launcher, Time of Day Tutorial, Options, Reveal and Explorer, which will take us over here. Let me pull up the script just to make sure I go to the correct one. Um, yes, I refer to my scripts as I do it. Um, do, 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 Click on Assets, Levels, and then Example. And then Level Data. There we go. And then we have Time of Day XML file. I'm using Notepad++ to open it up. 
and this is what it looks like. So, we can already see time of day, time 16, which coincides with uh, environment editor. There we go. So that way we have that reference. Uh, let me move that upwards. There we go. No, not full screen. Okay, there. That should be fine. Bring that down. Okay. So we have time of day. Time equals 16, which co corresponds with current. Then we have time start, 12, which corresponds with start of 12. Time end corresponds with end. Time animation speed set to zero. We did not set a speed here. And of course, preset name, libs environment preset, example XML, which targets right here. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change the time. Let's go with 19. And we're gonna save it. But we'll notice that the environment editor did not immediately update. That's fine, just click on File, Open, Levels, Example. And there we go, we have our 1900 time. I should note that this is all in 24 hour time. So if you don't know what 1900 is, that would be 7 o'clock. Alright, so now we can move on to our third way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on create object and I'm just going to create an empty entity. Straightforward, simple to the point. And then I'm going to create a script. That C sharp script will be called, you guess it, change time of day. Boom. And we can go ahead and attach that to the entity right there. I'm just going to save early, save often, because I know exactly what happens when you mess with things sometimes. All right. So now we can actually close that XML. And then we can look at Visual Studio finishing loading with ReSharper. Refer back to my notes. All right. So now we're going to do protected override void on gameplay start. So this will call be called immediately as the game starts. We're going to write one single line of code, and that is engine dot console dot execute string. And we're going to, let me see here, make sure I get everything correct. Okay. Is that supposed to be capitalized? Refer to, Um, where's my C++ example? There we go. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I do the correct command. E underscore time of day space 24. And save. And that's all we're going to do. What? Object reference is not in... This is why you save early, save often. So now, reopen time of day tutorial. God damn it. And eventually it'll load back up. There we go. Open. Uh, not levels, example. There we go. 
fp11 has changed time of day and then we'll run it and now we can pull up the environment editor current time 2359 that's not correct so let's pull up the code again oh wait it is correct because I set the time of day to be 24 this is why you should not absolutely remember what you're doing okay so that's fine that's actually the way it's supposed to work all right visual studio close all right cool so now we can move on to the fourth style and that'll be we're gonna remove the entity component there and then we're gonna do flow graph open and I do enter a group name you know what? I'm not gonna enter a group name there that should open the flow graph editor. There we go, entities, entity 11. And we only need two. Oh wait, I didn't do the C++ one yet. Okay, never mind. I'll take care of that next. All right, so. First node we want to add, you just right click, click add start node. For obvious reasons or at least I hope it's obvious and then we need add node look for time time of day so we're gonna set our time uh, let's do eight o'clock in the morning now we're going to set force update to one and then drag the output to be set time then we can just save all external flow graphs and now when we press play boom and of course it glitched but there we go we have eight o'clock in the morning save the project now we can exit out of this one and we can do time of day C++. Yes, I'm going to have to edit to change the... Uh... Oh, shit. I didn't want to load the sandbox editor. I'm too used to C sharp side. Okay, exit. Thank you. Uh, time of day C++. Reveal and explorer. Right click on game. Generate solution. Yay! I should note that everything I'm saying here is not going to be in the video. And do 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 it's compiling. Generating build, generating build solutions. Um I want game.sln. Visual Studio. And just like with C Sharp, it's basically the same, only you're using C Sharp or C code instead of C Sharp. So, what we want to do here is game. I'm going to go into components, player.c. And. Scroll, 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 scroll. And I'm going to put it in the process event. So what I'm going to do is add ev entity event start game. And I'm going to type G environment or game environment. P console. Oh, damn you. G environment. P, oh, P console. And then the same thing of execute string. And we want 
E underscore time of day. And we'll just set it to be all the way nighttime because the default is 12 o'clock. So now, you know, before building, let me actually showcase that. Time of day is C++. Now, I want to point out that this will actually build to game.dll. So the change I just made is not going to be in the engine yet. So levels, example. Taking a little bit to load. There we go. So let's just pull up the environment editor current time 12 o'clock so now we're going to exit that and then we're going to build solution there we go build six is succeeded zero failed zero up to date one skipped we'll exit visual studio now Let's load up time of day C++. Hello, D. Delop Quan Quapen. Genital words up, my dude. <laughs> Um, all right, so, god damn it. All right, so let's load the example, and then we'll press play in the editor, and boom, automatically changed over to 23.59 or 11.59 p.m., and we can verify this in the environment editor. Boom. That's all you got to do there. All right, so now that we have the video portion done, we can exit from that, pull up the script, and I do need to make a couple changes. Um, what was the times I used? Um, first things, no, 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 go up, go up, go up. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. you know, I'll change it as I get to it. Go up to the very beginning. Layout. I will do web layout. All right, so there we go. Now I pull up Audacity. And this is where the hilarity ensues, because I'm known to actually screw up horribly when doing this part, which is what I hate the most about recording videos. So we can do it all together. Make sure speakers, high definition, audio, microphone. All right, so... Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. There we go, good. <clears throat> Here we go. Time to record the audio. You know what? Swap that over here because I'm blind as a fucking bat. And I kind of am too lazy to... Wear my glasses. All right, here we go. Let me just readjust my microphone here. There. Salutations. I'm Jessico, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the video today, we are going to look at how to change the time of day settings in CryEngine. I know many aspects of CryEngine can be very cryptic and hard to figure out, as when you do a search for information, CryEngine 3 documentation appears before CryEngine 5.5, and even if you do find CryEngine 5.5, 
they tend to focus more on how to do things like this via flow graph. So let's rectify that and make it so that you... Blah, fuck. See? Like I said. So... Let's move over. So let's rectify... Delete that portion. And I need to change that, how to do this multiple ways. There we go. So let's rectify that and make it so that you know how to do this multiple ways. There. And of course there's the intro there. So I'll just add some empty space there. Uh, generate silence for, let's go with yeah, let's do just do 30 seconds. I don't care. I can edit the final audio later. All right, so now. <sighs> there are four ways we can change the time of day settings. The first and easiest way is to manually change it in the environment editor. The second method is to modify the XML file that stores the information that the engine reads from. The third way is via code with C++ or C Sharp. The approach is very similar between them. And the fourth way is to handle it via flow graph. Let's create a new project in CryEngine. Mine will be the third person template with C Sharp, just so that we have things on screen and see how things are affected and I will call the project Time of Day Tutorial. So while things are getting set up, I should note that the Time of Day settings handles things similar to how you expect things to occur in the real world. This means that CryEngine's Time of Day settings are controlled based on 24 hour time. The first and arguably the easiest way to change the... Fuck. Like I said, this is the fun part. Um, there we go. The first, and arguably the easiest way to change the time of day is to click on Tools, Environment Editor. It will open a new window dedicated completely to the environment settings. You can change the color of the sun, depth of field, filters, sun direction, sun ray effects, ocean fog, and so much more but we aren't going to focus on those today. Expand the window to show more and look at the bottom of the window. You will see start, current, speed, force sky update, and end. We are only going to focus on the current option at the moment. Change it from 12 to say 15. Immediately, you will see the sky change to a more desk time setting which coincides with 15 o'clock shit. See? What did I do and uh, oh yeah, I should stop recording so that way we can actually refer back to that. So videos uh, recorded, there we go. And we're just gonna mute the audio. What did we change that to? 16, okay. Oh, no. Oh, 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 fuck my life. Do you guys see what's wrong? Yeah, it shows the chat. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I have to record that section all over again. So you know what? We'll keep the original time I had set. Um, Which coincides with 15 o'clock. Yeah, so... We are only going to focus on the current option at the moment. Change it from 12 to say... 15. There we go. Change it to say 15. So 
So I can just delete this. So many useful C vars in the engine. Why don't I ever use them? Same reason why I never use them. Too lazy. Ah, oh, god damn it. I'm gonna have to record the video section all over again. Oh god, that sucks. Oh. That really, really fucking sucks. Okay, where was I? Um, change it from, right? Force guy update and end. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks a lot. That really makes me feel great. And this is exactly why I don't like to live stream. <laughs> because I don't like people seeing me fuck up. <laughs> uh, fuck my life. And with that, <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah, the video certainly did have genital warts up in it. <laughs> oh, God. So. When I redo the video, I'm going to have to make sure I remember the exact times I set instead of changing them as I record the audio. <sighs> God damn it. Oh, well. Okay. We are only... Oh, oof. I can't read my own scripts. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> God damn it, I can't keep a straight face now with that line. Uh. We are going to only focus on the current option at the moment. Change it from 12 to, say, 18. Immediately, you will see the sky change to a more dusk time setting, which coincides with 18, or 6 o'clock p.m. Save the environment editor settings changes by clicking on the floppy disk icon and we can move on to the next method. Before closing the environment editor, take a look at the left hand side of the screen. You will notice a file view pane. It shows a directory tree for where the file is stored. It is stored in the libs folder, which has a subfolder called environment presets, which houses our levels name.xml file. And this, of course, leads us directly to method number two. And got to edit the script as we go. Okay, okay, I'll put a space, damn it. Go ahead and close the environment editor. Navigate to the folder you created in your project and click on Asset. Navigate to the folder you created in your project. Blah. English, do you speak it, motherfucker? No! Close the environment editor. Close the environment editor. Um, I think... You know what? Let me see. Navigate to the folder you created in your project and click on S. I think maybe I should actually rewrite that. No, no, no. I'll just showcase. Okay. Navigate to the folder you created in your project and click on Assets. Click on Levels and then Example. This will open the directory that stores our level information. Click on Level Data and this is where... 
Click on Level Data and this is where all the XML data that makes up our level is stored. Yeah, it's not very glamorous the way I record my content. The XML file we want to modify is the time of day XML file. I don't like that line. Do 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 is named. The XML file we want to modify is named Time of Day. Double click on it to open it up. I will be using Notepad++ for this. We can see time is set at 18, which is what we did with the environment editor. Let's change that to be 15 to represent 3 o'clock PM and save the file. Now, we can obviously see that the level did not update in the editor as it was left open. Just click on File, Open, and select the level. We can see that the level has the proper time of day settings now. Let's move on to our third option, via code. Create a new script and call it Time of Day. Double click on the script to open it up in Visual Studio. In the on gameplay start method, we are going to write a single line of code. Write engine.console.execute string. Let me hear that played back. Write engine.console.execute string. Yeah, I sounded a bit, uh, Scared to say execute string? Write engine.console.execute string. This tells the engine that we are going to execute a console command to it. This method has three ways you can use it. You can just issue the text command to it. You can issue the command and specify whether it will execute in silent mode, or you can issue the command and specify whether it will execute in silent mode and if it should defer execution. <coughs> ah, shit. Not a problem at all, man. Uh, this is probably the least efficient way to do it, to be honest. <laughs> I know other developers will just record everything live and then just edit and chop up things as they need to. I personally don't like having my videos have the uh, uh, clacking of my keyboard. It's one of the downsides of actually having a mechanical keyboard. Um, Where was I? Oh yeah, there we go, right here. Silent mode set to true means that it will silence... Why did I write silent the exit? God damn it. It will silence. I kill you! Okay. Silent mode set to true means that it will silence the execution of the command from the logs. Defer execution set to true means that it will execute the command on the next frame. Set to false will execute the command immediately. Good information to know for the... Fuck. Good information for the average user to know, I should think. And then, of course... Blue switches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good information for the 
for the average user to know. I should think. See how loud that keyboard is? Ugh! That's so ugly in videos. Live streams, of course, you can't really help it. Um... There we go. And... Add a string. Wow. See, this is what I really, really hate. I kid you not. This annoys me to no end. Just the constant messing up of the line. It's like it's right there in my face. And I'm just like... Blah, 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 blah. Add a string in the parameter of the method with the value being E underscore time of day. Add a space and write 24. We are specifying the time of day will be at 24 or midnight. In the environment editor, it will show up as 2359. Definitely should add that. All my crappy tu tutorials that I have set on private is filled with clacks and clacks. Now that you mentioned it, I think I'm going to go redo some stuff. I mean, for me, it just... I mean, it shows that the person is doing it right then and there and everything, but I just feel that it adds just that little bit of distraction to it. And it's like, I don't know how to put it. Um, it doesn't feel as clean and refined, you know? So it's not really that it's a bad tutorial if someone does it that way. Plenty of tutorial creators do that. But for me personally, it just adds that distraction and doesn't sound as clean and professional. It's like you don't really care about the overall aesthetic of your channel. Not sure how Brackies does it or any of those guys, but I'm pretty sure they just record as they go. Which is why I separate the audio from the video and then merge it together as I do the edit. It's more work in the long run, but I feel it just adds that little touch to make it feel a little more professional. Even if behind the scenes I'm screaming, cursing, and going what the fuck at everything I do. Yeah, and don't get me started on the research phase. Oh, that's probably one of the most annoying aspects of any type of development. When you're like, hmm, I wonder how I should do this. Like, with this tutorial, I initially set it up as just doing C-sharp. Now, obviously, that would be a really short video. Because you're just doing one line. I was like, mm, I can throw in C++, too. Like, well, that's still just one line. And just saying, okay, it should go here, as what I would suggest. And I was like, you know... I should also do the environment editor as many designers aren't going to be programmers. So they're going to want to know how to do it. Which then led to, okay, add flow graph to it as well because or designers will use flow graph as well. <coughs> so I actually had to research how to do it in flow graph. And what I did was I looked at a more complicated setup for doing more than just changing the time. It was actually setting up time of day to be reflected on certain amount of hours in the real world. So I just broke it down into a much more compact way that fit the way I was doing it with the video. Didn't take long, it was just a little bit of research and going, okay, why the hell is this flow graph not working? And 
in the live stream, I'll actually showcase what I initially did. So it'll kind of make a little bit more sense at that point. Um, where was I? I have no idea. In the environment editor, it will show up as 2359. Okay. Go back to the CryEngine editor window and click on your player component in the level explorer. Click add component and select our time of day script and add it to it. Oh, I need to change that. Um, editor window and we're going to, uh, do I still have CryEngine up? I want to make sure I specify that. Uh oh. I have a message. Okay. Don't care. Oh, yeah. The C was probably harder than the flow graph, to be honest. And that's only because I had to go, okay, I need to convert this to C. What's the proper way to do that? So then I looked at the C sharp source for CryEngine and looked at the variables that it relates to in C++, which is basically an interface, which doesn't exactly coincide with C++. Yeah, that was fun. And I was like, oh yeah, G environment. Okay, so there we go. Just need to modify the script a little bit here. Um, click on create comp create object, select empty entity, and drag and drop it anywhere in your level. Having different ways to go about things tends to bring more people in through the, yeah, English, not my strong point today. Tends to bring more people in though, but for sure it takes a lot more research. Yeah, definitely. Just recently got into learning C++, spent six straight hours and five pages full of notes taped on my wall. I enjoyed it. I have about four different books on C++, and every time I start to pour through it, I'm just like, it's not C-sharp, go away. <laughs> <coughs> and don't get me wrong, when, once you figure things out in C++, y y you feel accomplished. You're like, oh, so when you're doing the... Uh, little arrow, it's actually a pointer to a specific call, a specific method call, shit like that. And I probably explained that very wrong. Okay, uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, uh, go back to the CryEngine editor window, click on create it, select the blah 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 blah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. So I did create the new script. There we go. Okay. So now we are up to date in our time of day settings. Um, go back to the CryEngine editor window and click on Create Object. Select empty entity and drag and drop it anywhere in your level. Select that entity and click add component and select our time of day script to add to it. Oops. See what I did? I noticed another mistake. Select that entity and click. Um, select. Select 
There we go. Yeah, so even though I write the script beforehand, I still go back and modify it as I see fit, depending on the actual necessity. It's like I'll rewrite entire lines if I have to. It just needs to fit the overall video. It's like if I find myself rambling in the script, I will condense it. And pro tip, which was actually given to me by my good friend and programming mentor. He said, when creating tutorials, never ask a question. You're, you have to think in the tutorial, it seems like, or I should say with the tutorial, the people that watch it or read it, they're looking to you to be the subject matter expert. So if you're like, well, how should we change it? It just makes it feel like you're being condescending to them instead of just presenting the information. Uh, how far are we into the script anyways? Uh, not bad, actually. Almost done with it. And without doing any video editing or anything, it's currently less than 10 minutes. So that's nice. All right. Uh, now, obviously, the time of day will not shift yet as the code has not been executed. So click on the play button to execute the method. You should see the same result as what I have here. Immediately on pressing the play button, the sky shifts from 3 p.m. to midnight. You can even exit from play mode and the results will still be in effect. In C++, you would have to close the editor for any change to code you make. The code for C++ looks like... Bleh. Ah, yeah. So... I actually want to a little different from what we just did in C sharp. Let's open a C project and <coughs> so let's create a C not C equals C project. And let me see right, how there we go. The code for C looks a little different from what we just did in C sharp. So let's create a C++ project and look at how it should be done there. I find that coding sure does take much more time than a lot of things though. I find it hard juggling my music and music production, environment, art, and coding. Any tips, advice? Ooh. Um, well, as a musician myself, I completely understand. As for environment mar art, uh... That is something I don't ever touch, mainly because I'm terrible at it. Uh, but pretty much what you can do is you can, bleh, you can try to put all of them together in a single thing. So let's say you want to create a beautiful environment. Well, you're obviously going to need music that fits that environment. <laughs> So, after creating that environment with the art that you've made, create a song that coincides with it. And you're obviously going to have to use your music production talents with the music to make it sound as good as it can. And then you can write code for when it should trigger and when it shouldn't, things like that. So, just try to meld it together a little bit. It's a lot harder than I'm making it out to be. It does take a lot more work. 
but in the long run, it allows you to juggle many things at once by putting it together. That's kind of how I would go about it. And then there's some times when I'm just like, I don't feel like coding today. I'm going to play some music. Or I don't feel like playing guitar. I guess I'll play piano today. I don't feel like playing piano. I'll play the bass today. And then if I, say, get a ton of... Whoa, I have like an album worth of material, but it's going to get tough to get the visuals what would fit with what I'm working on. It depends on the music itself. I I get that completely. But it doesn't just have to be an environment. You could do UI, things like that. Maybe, let's say if you wrote like some badass m metal music. Like some genty goodness or some really thrashy goodness. That works very well for an environment and scene where there's a lot of action. Uh, if you're writing more jazz-based, uh, I would definitely say depends on the song itself. But if the jazz is a little bit more laid back and everything, use it with a laid technical death metal. Right on. Right fucking on, dude. Uh, <laughs> with technical death metal, then, just like with thrash or gent, a really, really awesome battle scene. It's like, especially if it's chaotic. It's like you could write AI code to just have the enemies always go towards the player, and then the player is trying to combo the shit out of them, like with Dynasty Warriors. Uh, and then add a lot of uh, blood effects and everything. Huh? Who messaged me? Huh? Oh. Okay. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Blood effects and everything. Blood spatter. I mean, there's more to an environment than just the props. It's like, it's also the characters. It's also the effects that happen to the environment. So blood effects, gore effects. That adds to the environment. But yeah. Hey, if you're in my Discord server, you can definitely share some of your music. I would love to hear that technical death metal. I'm a huge fan of the the chaotic nature of technical death metal. It's like, uh, there's a band on YouTube I've recently been watching their playthroughs of. Uh, what was the name of it again? Let me look. And I should note that when I'm actually doing my own video recordings, I do typically watch YouTube. Um, where are they? Um, gotta scroll through this giant list of videos I watched afterwards. Oh, Vitriol. It's like, this dude is really insane. These guys are nuts. I don't know if you can hear that. Why is there no sound coming from... Why is there no sound? That's annoying. Paste and go. I have no idea why I'm getting no audio from YouTube. Weird. Yeah. But, uh, they're really, really, really good. It's like that bass player is insane. It's like... I can't do half the shit that guy does on bass. 
even though I'm not a bassist. And the guitarist, he's really sick too. Yeah. Ooh. I've never actually played Technical Death. And the only reason for that is because I'm lazy. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I'm lazy and I don't feel like going into that chaotic of territory. Now, I have mixed some elements of Technical Death into what I've been doing. Getting into Silosis recently? I haven't heard of them. I'll check them out. But typically, I I watch a lot of genty goodness. Uh, mainly just because I've been getting more into the groovy side of metal more than the chaotic. I find that the older I get, the more laid back I want things to be. Imperial. Haven't heard of them. Like, I know it's a bit uh, cliched, but I listen to Periphery a lot. Uh, another good band is, or there's two actually. One is uh, Jupiter Down, Instrumental Goodness, and it's so good. It's uh, more gent. And then the other one is, oh god, what's their name? Um... I'm drawing a blank on them, but, uh, Moon Teeth? No, I haven't. I'll check them out, too. But there's this, uh, gent band that has two basses and a drummer, and that's all. And the music they produce is really nice. Blue Sis. Haven't heard of them either. I'll definitely check those out. Oh, uh, where was I? So let's create a C plus plus project and look at how it should be done there. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, I need to add a bit more to. Yeah. They're really good. It's just the name always eludes me. Oh, wait. Do I have it in? Oh, wait. Let me just do File Explorer. File Explorer Music. Nope. Oh, Data Drive Music. Um, there's Jupiter down. Um, the Omnific. There we go. Oh, Chinese? 2019 Nian. Five... Yeah, yeah, Chinese. Cool. I'll definitely check that out. Um, where's my restream chat? There we go. Okay, so let me add a bit more to this. Open the project directory of the C++ project created. Where you see game. Right click on it. Thanks, Didi. Um, right click on it and select generate solution. All right. Right click on it. Generate solution, yep. When asked, click 
Okay, on um, generate for Visual Studio 2017. With X64 build options. There we go. Navigate inside of the solutions folder. Drill down into Win64 folder. And double click to open game.sln. Oops, .sln. <sighs> open up Visual Studio. Yeah, this is the fun part. Adding parts you forgot. Um, in the game directory of the Visual Studio solution, Expand the component directory folder and open player.cpp. In the process of mint method in the in the player .cpp file go to the case of Go to the God damn it <clears throat> Entity underscore event underscore start underscore game Fucker Case Underneath of revive add G environment. Crap, what is this called again? That's one of the things I like to do a lot. Just make sure I use the proper terms. Um, C plus plus meaning. See the member arrow operator or I guess let me just double check yeah okay add G environment member arrow operator P console member arrow operator execute string with the string parameter set to be e under underscore time of day with the space in between and the number 24 this tells the game environment to use 
the console variable. Execute the string. Execute the string specified. Which will change the time of day to 23.59. There. Now we can remove that. <coughs> there we go. So we've added more to it and made it a little bit more feature complete instead of just adding a screenshot. All right. So now open the project should be the next line we read. So let's create a C++ project and look at how it should be done there. Yep. There we go. All right. Open the project directory of the C++ project created. Where you see game, right click on it and select generate solution. When asked, click OK on generate for Visual Studio 2017 with 64-bit build options. Navigate inside the solutions folder Drill down into Win64 folder and double click to open game.sln. In the game directory of the Visual Studio solution, expand the components folder and open player.cpp. Scroll down to the process event method in the player.c file. Go to the entity underscore event underscore start underscore game case underneath of revive add g environment member arrow operator p console member arrow operator execute string with the string parameter set to be e underscore time of day with space in between and the number 24. this tells the game environment to use the console variable to execute the string specified which will change the time of day to be 23.59 or 11.59 p.m. There we go. Oh yeah, I should totally add a little bit more. Oops. Open the C++ project in the CryEngine editor and load the level. You will see that the level currently has the time of day set to be 12 o'clock. Exit from the CryEngine editor. Pull Visual Studio back up and click build. Depending on your system and the number of threads it can handle Simultaneously, it will determine how long it will take to build the project. Open the CryEngine editor again and load the level. Press the play button and the time of day will 
update to 2359 or 11 59 p.m. Save and exit from the C. Project and open the C sharp project back up. Okay, there. Lots and lots of changes all over the place. Huh? I have a message. Someone asking me about Unity networking. Why? I know too many game engines. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um. Which will change the time of day to be 23.59 or 11.59 p.m. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's continue on. Open the C++ project in the CryEngine editor and load your level. You'll see that the level currently has the time of day set to be 12 o'clock. Exit from the CryEngine editor, pull Visual Studio back up, and click Build. Depending on your system and the number of threads it can handle simultaneously, it will determine how long it will take to build the project. Open the CryEngine editor up again and load the level. Press the play button and the time of day will update to 23.59 or 11.59 p.m. Save and exit from the C++ project and open the C Sharp project back up. Now we can move on to the last, but certainly not least, method. There we go. Yay, almost done with the audio side. Now we can move on to the last, but certainly not least, method. I would be remiss to include how to do it in flow graphs, even though if Crytek has covered it in their tutorials. For the sake of covering all bases, I must do it here as well. First things first, remove the script we created for handling time of day from the entity it was attached to. In the flow graph tab in properties, select open and press the OK button. Click on tools and flow graph to open the flow graph editor window. Select your entity in the graph section of the flow graph editor window. Now we can add our nodes. The first node to add is our start node. To do this, right click in the graph and select add start node. Now we need a time of day node to be added. Right click in the graph and highlight add node. Look for and highlight time and then select time of day. Put the line from output in the game start node to set time in the time of day node. Click on double click on force update in the prop blah, 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 blah. damn it. And again with that shit. Oh crap, where was I? Um oh there it is. There we go. 
Click on Force Update and in the Properties tab in the top right, put a check mark to set it to be true. The last thing to do is double click on time and set it to be 8 for 8 o'clock a.m. Click on File and save all external graphs. Now click on the play button and you will see the sky update once again. And there you have it. All four ways you can update the time of day settings in CryEngine. I hope you found this video useful no matter how you work with CryEngine. I want to give a warm shout out to my Patreon supporters. Ethan, Rumi Ruse, or <laughs> Rumi Ruse, <laughs> sorry, Rumi Rooms, Matt Coburn, and Kupala. Thank you very much for your continued support. It means a lot to me, guys. All right. Um... Ethan. Ruby Rooms, Matt Coburn, and Kupala. Thank you very much for your continued support. It means a lot to me, guys. All right, we have finished the audio portion of the tutorial. Yay. Okay, so there's a couple things to do here. First, we need to be very, very... Okay, good. And now we can take all this, select effect, noise reduction, get noise profile, select everything, effect, noise reduction, okay. Now it's applying the noise reduction. So any background noise that was present will be gone. So yeah, this video looks like it'll be maybe a total of 15 to 20 minutes tops with, you know, with chopping up the audio for where it needs to go. Alright, so now, oops, oops, salutations, and now I'll duplicate it, salutations, I'm Jessica, and I'll switch this to be pan left. and right and duplicate and center this one there so now salutations I'm Jessica and you're watching game dev made easy in the video today perfect okay so now we can export uh, you know what I'll export it as wave I don't care export as wave and we are going to call this one time of day audio. Boom. Don't care. Then we can do it again. Export as MP3 though. Time of day. Very, very nice. And we're just about done with that part. All right, so let's take a look here. The first one is 18. All right, cool. Now we can exit because we have our audio done. And now for the next part. Okay, so let's just verify. The chat no longer is showing up there. That means when I do the video this time, 
that it shouldn't have that happen again. Okay, so I'm going to click start recording. Oh, wait. I'm going to have to edit that a little bit because we need to remove project from disk. Oh, make sure nothing is blocking it. Um... I guess I should close that. Yes, remove it. Why? What's open? Oh. Remove. Remove. And then remove. I don't care about the roll ball. So remove. All right, so cool. So now we can record, right? Right? OBS, where are you? There you are. Okay, we're recording. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, uh, Discord messages. Alright, so... Create C-sharp, third person. We are calling this time of day tutorial. Once again. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Looking at the sky again. Um, let's turn that off there. Okay. So, tools, environment, editor, and I said this one was 18. So, start, current, speed, for sky update, end. So, we're going to change this to 18, right? Yes. And then, a more dusk-like sky. Save. Oh, wait. Then point out libs, environment preset, example XML. Save, exit. Good. Do, 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 do. So now, time of day tutorial reveal and explorer. I'll do that. And then we go to assets, we go to levels, example, level data, time of day. There we go. And then time, really? Why is that not correct? That's not correct. Um, current, 18. That is not the correct one. The hell. Let's pull 
it back up. Time of day tutorial. Reveal and explore. Assets. Levels. Example. Level data. Time of day. Okay. So apparently it just didn't want to update. Weird. Okay. So we're going to change this one to be 15. Save. from that then we'll go levels example and then we'll do environment editor current 15 good so now we can move on to third option via code a new script and call it time of day gonna open it in Visual Studio wait for Visual Studio to load and then we're gonna do engine as soon as it finishes loading dot console dot execute string e underscore time of day space and yeah it's 24 okay exit from the source now we create an empty game object throw it wherever add component time of day save and then it set it to add and then we'll look at the environment editor which will showcase 2359 all right and then we'll minus that down We'll create a new C++ project. Again, third person, CPP time of day. Create. Reveal and explore. And we'll right click, generate solution. Yeah, this is the boring part because I've already done this and <laughs> we have to do it again. Generate solution. Do, 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 do. I'll click on solutions, win 64 game.sln in game components player.c++ the player process event Revive. G environment. P console. Execute string. God damn it. Uh, well, there's an edit I have to do. G environment. E console execute string e underscore of day space twenty four. Now we have that saved. Uh, wrong project. Now we'll launch.
launch the C++ time of day. He's zapping that electric lettuce there. No, for some reason, uh, CryEngine likes to uh, produce a lot of static from my uh, monitor. Or from my, uh, yeah, from my monitors. Now we'll open the level. Yeah, I just turned my monitors down and now we can't hear it, which is good. Okay, so we have that and just the showcase. Spawns the player. And then tools, environment editor. Current time is 12. Exit with no saves to the level. Now we can select build solution. Six succeeded, zero failed up to date. We can exit from that. Load that back up. Oh, it's gonna ask me again, isn't it? Yes, open a new instance anyways. Open levels example and again. Just the showcase environment editor current 12 press play and sky updates boom environment editor 2359 save exit and now we can go back to the c sharp project And do flow graph. So we'll remove the time of day from the entity or the empty entity. Click on open, click OK, and it opens up the flow graph editor window this time. Click on entity 11, add node, add start node, and then add node. Time, uh, time of day. There we go. And do, 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 do. put a line from output to set time. Force update, put the check mark. And then time, we're going to set it to 8. Save all external graphs, exit, and then play. And of course the bug happens. Yeah, I had weird stuff going on when I had BiasFX and CryEngine open. Compiling takes up time, so why not fill it with learning new scales or new anything? Yeah, I'd agree. Current eight. There we go. Save. Exit. And now we can go over to OBS and stop the recording. Oop. Uh, data videos recorded. So this one should be the fail state. And indeed it is. So we can delete the fail state. I haven't used bias in a while. There we go. And damn, all four of those just took 13 minutes to actually record. All right, so we have our audio and video. I'm gonna copy that there. We can exit, 
cry engine all together and I got another message somewhere okay from restream okay um oh yeah now it's time to load up steam software magic's video deluxe 2018 uh, this is this is what i would say is the boring part because now it's just matching things up together in editing But it could always be worse, right? <sighs> Data drive D, videos, renders, okay. And the name of this is Time of Day. Tutorial. I'm just really, really lazy when it comes to editing. If I had it my way, I would seriously just say, here's the files, edit it for me. Of course, I'm too cheap to pay someone to do that. Um, now I need desktop. There we go. And we're going to take the waveform audio. There we go. And then, here we go. Movie has a resolution of 19. Oh, okay, fine. That's fine. Whatever. Um, now, what do I need? Oh, yeah. I know what I need. Videos. Oh. Wrong drive. The intro. I am going to need my intro video. I'm also going to need that background. Scroll. Move that over there. Make a copy. There we go. So now, So now I need to find my pictures. There we go. Pull up the angry gnome. Salutations. I'm just so. Ah. And then go through. And you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. There we go. Salutations. I'm just so. And you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. Oops. There we go. And I need to find some more pictures. Um. Oops, mutations. Let's see, what do I want to do for... I like that. Okay, save image as. 
Wait, where did it get saved to? Desktop. There we go. Right about there is where that should appear. And this is where I go. GIF. Visit. How does this video editing software feel to work with other with compared to others? I actually like Movie Edit Pro. It's really straightforward to the go. There we go. It's like straightforward to get with and actually start working with. Let's see how that looks. I'm just so, and you're watching Game Dev Magazine. And the video. Um. Store page. And. In RMB, it's 112 RMB. But let's pull it up here, which should give US pricing. Or, oh fuck, that's right, I'm connected to Japan VPN. Oh, it's about $100 normally. Yeah, this one's actually fairly stable and easy to work with uh, depending on if you have Windows or Mac depends on what I would suggest using on Mac you can get away with using uh, what's it called iMovie and it'll work just fine has some really good transitions uh, as for Windows I typically just always use either Movie Edit Pro or Vegas. I have Sony Vegas as well. Although I don't have it currently installed. Oh, it, yes I do. I have Sony Vegas Pro 15, which I got from Humble Bundle. I guess I can move the chat over here since uh, on this computer I'm using Windows 10 and then on my MacBook Pro I'm using obviously uh, OS X Sierra or is it Mojave now yeah There we go. I like that one. Save image as. Let's 
Oh, what? Oh, no. Let me undo that. That's not the gift. Visit. I tend, I have used Linux builds before, it's just, I tend to not have all the software available to me, um, that I like. No, not enable text to speech. Um, where is it? Not Discord. I haven't really touched too much game development on Linux, mainly because the editors I use typically aren't always there. Um, I need to download this. Save image as. Giphy 2. But for the most part, it's basically the same. Yes, that's a good gift. Look at save image as four, and then cry engine logo. Hmm. Wait, don't I have the logo already? I feel like I have the logo already. Yep. There we go. Oh yeah. Here we're going to look at how to change the time of day settings in Cryon. Boom. Beautiful. And meme tastic. I thought I already did this part. Let me just double check here at the very top. Is that where I end with the Oh, nope. <laughs> C 
crap. There we go. Um... Yeah, I can just leave that blank, but I am going to make a copy. There we go. There. I want to do de I want to do tutorials on game development on a serious budget, so I'm always looking for new software. Sick of seeing tutorials only with 3ds Max and Maya. Well, 3ds Max and Maya are industry standard. Uh, you can move on to Substance Designer, and uh, I believe it's called. Polybrush? I think it's Polybrush. Let me look. No, that's not it, but there is... Um, shit, what's the name of that software? Um, ZBrush, that's what it is. That's kind of why I set up my channel the way it is. I was sick of just seeing Unity tutorials or just Unreal Engine tutorials or just a specific engine tutorial. I didn't really see any... <laughs> yeah, I, I completely get you on that. But uh, I didn't see a whole lot of people really doing unbiased comparisons and workflow walkthroughs. It's like, I've seen people that do comparisons between Unity and, and Unreal Engine, and their bias shows. Like, oh, this engine is definitely better. It can produce these results right out of the box. And it's like, okay, but what about when you actually work with it to the greatest extent? How do you go about doing that and showcase those comparable results? So that's how my channel evolved. Originally, I just did Unity tutorials. And before then, I was actually talking about politics. Yeah, I know. Great subject matter to talk about. So I purged all that shit out. And then was like, you know what, I'm just going to do Unity tutorials. And then I realized just how big of a pool that I was fighting against. I'm like, I'm not getting any subscribers or views based off this. I'm going to have to do something unique. So, I was like, you know what, why not just work with more than one game engine and be completely unbiased about it. It's like with the time of day settings. Unity and Unreal Engine do not have time of day settings like CryEngine has. Instead, you can dick around with the uh, directional lighting and change your skybox and everything. But 
it's not really a direct time of day sort of system. So I can't do a comparison with that. It's like the engine has something completely different that they don't. So I can't say, oh, this is how you would achieve the same thing even though they're not the same systems or even remotely similar. So I pick and choose what I do comparisons with. It's like, yeah, I can very easily showcase code comparisons. Like, this is how you go through the workflow of creating X with CryEngine in C Sharp. This is how you would go about it with Unity. And I like those a lot. Why did that close? But doesn't really get too deep into the differences and similarities. It's just here's the obvious API differences. What gets but then again you also have full access to the source of CryEngine so that's kind of fun. And then of course showcasing Oh, here's how you set up a model in CryEngine, Unity, Unreal Engine, so on and so forth. It's like, that's all well and good. It's basically the same thing, drag and drop. The only difference is how materials are set up, how shaders are set up and shit like that. And one thing I am researching, but that's going to take a while, is animations. I can do animations in Unity and Unreal Engine just fine. It's basically drag and drop, go. CryEngine, not so much. It's a completely different workflow. But I want to be able to explain everything. It's like, yes, here's the workflow differences between them, but also I want you to fully understand what is happening. And just doing, oh, here's how you, a quick, uh, comparison of the end results doesn't really do much and that annoys me to no end um let's see i need another gif cryptic gif look up giphy Actually, that one actually works. Save image as five. Yes, I'm really lazy about my naming conventions when it comes to images. I know many aspects of crime engine can be very cryptic and hard to figure. There we go, I think that's good. I know many aspects of crime engine can be very cryptic and hard to figure out. One more, and then hard to figure out. Difficult. That's perfect. Boom. So let's take a look at this. I know many aspects of crime engine can be very cryptic and hard to figure out, as when you do a search for information, crime engine will read documentation that deals with your crime engine 5.5, and even if you do find crime engine 5.5, they tend to focus more on how people would like to install a flow graph. So let's rectify that and make it so that you know how to do it multiple ways. Uh, many, oops, many ways. And then let's see, this one is going to be number seven. There it is. And make it so that you know how to do this multiple ways. 
good. Now I can highlight this and fix this intro so that it covers the full screen. Size and position, 1920. Oh shit, 1920 by 1080. That should be correct, let's see. Perfect. So I'm going to save the project because we all know that software likes to crash sometimes. Researching a cave, but decided to look at the roadmap first to see if any upcoming future releases would make my tutorials obsolete. And then dive deep in the IK depending on 5.6 release. Yeah. And that's not even the 2019 roadmap, which is probably going to happen in the summer, around July ish. <laughs> Finally caught a Jesco stream. He's editing a video for around two hours straight about talking about stuff on stream and then he accidentally rendered the wrong video. Great entertaining me. I did not render the wrong video. I recorded badly. So I had to re-record. <laughs> uh, asshole. Okay, so, yeah, I figured it might as well be entertaining with live stream, after all. It's not every day a, someone decides to re showcase exactly how they build a tutorial. Even though the stream kind of gives away the whole surprise of the video. <sighs> Have I really been streaming for two hours? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> General wards up, everyone. <laughs> <coughs> Son of a bitch, that makes me laugh too hard. Um, it's not the evolution. It's a uh, cheaper alternative. Oh, yeah, I need to uh, edit that. There we go. I forgot all about that. Um, but I do want to keep some of that beginning. Um, before I had it up. There we go. So copy. And then cut that away. There. Um, now we'll go through scrub, 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 scrub. There. Okay, good to go. Boom. Um, now I need to pull this back just a tad. Let me just make sure. There are still ways we can change the time of day settings. The first is. Wait, what? Why do I hear two? Time of day 
yes, I have used Reaper. I use it a lot. Oh, shit. Turn off that audio. <laughs> have you tried Reaper? It would be cool if Reaper would release a video editor in the software as well. Trying to find the most cost-efficient bundle software of workflow. Um... Reaper itself is designed to be a doll. But, check this out with the Movie Edit Pro. Um, record audio, images, video. So this does allow for you to record uh, audio. And then, there's also, um, where is it? Audio effect. So, you can actually load up ones that they have available for you. So you can do echo and shit like that. Um, and you can also add plugins, a video plugin. Here, let me show an example of what the, uh, so here's, there are four ways we can change the time of this setting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The first way is to manually change it in the environment editor so now let's do come on let's let's add the base filter to it there are four ways we can change the time of day settings add some reverb to it um Now let's add the. I just did. There. Salutations. Salutations. Why are you way back there? Salutations. I'm Jessico. Salutations. What the hell? Salutations. I'm Jessica. Over here. And you're watching Game Why? Dev Made Easy. Okay, so. Salutation. Salutation. So I'll just do it to this. I'll drag that there. Salutations. I'm Jessica. And you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the video today, we are going to look at how to change the time of day settings in CryEngine. Can you load VSTs? Um, let me see. Plugins. Um, I don't think you can do VST plugins. Um, let me look. All right, damn it. Audio effects, objects, audio effects. Load audio effects, so. Oh, it needs to be an AFX file. So I'm gonna throw the no effect on that and then no effect on this. Now, this one's hilarious. Wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. EQ loudness. So check this out. Salutations. I'm Jessico, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. And then we can also do some EQ brilliance. Salutations. I'm Jessico. That did not change the sound at all. Phone booth. Salutations. I'm Jessico. Why did not, why did that not? Come on. Okay. Come on. Wrong one. Switch back. Salutations. Drag. Drop. Salutations. I'm Come on. Come on. 
There are four ways we can change the really? time. Salutations. I'm Jesco, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the video today, we are going to look at how to change the time of day settings in CryEngine. Yep, um, let me see, where's the other one? Oh yeah, speaker. Salutations. I'm Jesco, and... And then... Come on! Come on! Tin box. This is probably my favorite. Salutations. I'm Jesco, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. Come on! Come on! Salutations. I'm Jesco, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the video today, we are going to look at how to change the time of day settings in CryEngine. I know many aspects of CryEngine can be very <laughs> cryptic. Uh, I fucking love those random switches like that. Right there, that should fix that. Salutations. I'm Jesco, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the video today, we are going to look at how to change. There we go. <laughs> oh shit. That actually caused my subwoofer to kick in. Nice. Sounds like you're stuck in a sewer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's how you intentionally make your videos sound terrible. The sewer pickles were calling his name. Yummy. Speaking of which. Me so hungry. See, I started streaming at like 7 o'clock in the morning and totally did not eat breakfast beforehand. So I mean that tasty cake. Call me fat all you want. It's true. <laughs> hmm. Salutations. God damn it. There are four ways we can change the time of day settings. The first and easiest way is to manually change it in the environment editor. The second method is to modify the XML file that stores the information that the engine reads from. The third way is via code with C++ or C Sharp. The approach is very similar between them. And the fourth way is to handle it via flow graph. Let's create a new project in CryEngine. Mine will be the third person template with C Sharp, just so that we have things on screen and see how things are affected. And I will call the project Time of Day Tutorial. What the hell was I doing while that part was being recorded? So while things are getting set up, I should note that. I mean, look, there's like. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did... God damn it. Note to self. Remember. Remember. Not to screw up. Okay, so copy, paste, cut from there, and this is where, where do we actually switch? There, okay, so way back there. Ah, uh, editing. There 
go. And the fourth way is to handle it via flow graph. Let's create a new project in CryEngine. Mine will be the third person template with C Sharp, just so that we have things on screen and see how things are affected. And I will call the project time of day tutorial. So while things are getting set up, I should note that the time of day settings handle <coughs> things similar to how you expect things to occur in the real world. This means that CryEngine's time of day settings are controlled based on 24 hour time. The first, and arguably the easiest way to change the time of day is to click on Tools, Environment Editor. It will open a new window dedicated completely to the environment settings. You can change the color of the sun, depth of field, filters, sun direction, sun ray effects, ocean fog, and so much more. But we aren't going to focus on those today. Expand the window to show more and look at the bottom of the window. You will see Start, Current, Speed, Force Sky Update, and End. We are going to only focus on the current option at the moment. Change it from 12 to say 18. Immediately, you will see the sky change to a more dusk time setting, which coincides with 18, or 6 o'clock p.m. Save the environment editor settings changes by clicking on the floppy disk icon and we can move on to the next method. Hmm. This is where I would go, hmm. How do I want to edit that? <coughs> because I have to decide Wait, no, I don't. Because check this out. I can load up the CryEngine launcher. Open the time of day tutorial. And then, once it finishes loading, I can take screenshots. So let me go ahead and open the level. So I can do that. And then, tools. Then I can do print screen. which will allow me to go whoop. and then I should just be able to paste that there yes right uh, no uh, I need paint because I'm lazy paste File, save as, PNG, desktop, untitled one. Oh, damn it. E1. Then, I can do the same thing with tools. And we'll switch it to default. I'll just take a screenshot of this. Boom. Click on new. Boom. Save as untitled one. Screenshots, man, it works. So then that means I can, I've used it, I just don't like it.
Plus, why use share X when I can use Restream with OBS? Speaking of which, I think I have share X. Let me see. Share. Nope. Hmm. Isn't that a free one? Yeah. It says it's in my library. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's screenshot. I don't know. I like the uh, snipping tool that Microsoft provides. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So while things are getting set up, I should note that arguably the easiest way to change the time of day is to click on Tools, Environment Editor. It will... Environment Editor. It's to click on Tools. There we go. Um... You won. is to click on Tools, Environment Editor. It will open a new window dedicated completely to the environment. You can change the color of the sun, depth of field, filters, sun direction, sun ray effects, ocean fog, and so much more. But we aren't going to focus on those today. Expand the window to show more and look at the bottom of the window. You will see start, current, speed, four sky update, and end. We are going to only focus on the current option at the moment. Change it from 12 to say 18. Immediately, you will see the sky change to a more There we go. Copy it, paste it. Uh oh. Boom. And then boop boop be doop. Come on, come back. There we go. And then zoom in. I don't care about me doing that. Change it from 12 to, say, 18. Immediately, you will see the sky change to a more... Immediately, you will... Copy. There we go. Change it from 12 to say 18. Immediately, you will see the sky change to a more dusk time setting, which coincides with 18 or 6 o'clock p.m. 
Save the environment editor settings changes by clicking on the floppy disk icon and we can move on to the settings changes by clicking on the floppy disk icon and we can move on to the next method. Before closing the environment editor, take a look at the left hand side of the screen. You will notice a file view pane. It shows a directory There we go. You will notice the file view pane. It shows a directory tree for where the file is stored. It is stored in the libs folder, which has a subfolder called environment presets, which houses our levels name.xml file. And this of course leads us directly to method number two. Go ahead and close the environment editor. Navigate to the folder you created in your project and click on Assets. Click on Levels and then Example. This will open the directory that stores our level information. Click on Level Data and this is where all the XML data that makes up our level is stored. The XML file we want to modify is named Time of Day. Double click on it to open it up. I will be There we go, copy, paste. You have to remember that I had to, I did some double checking. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Wait a minute. Did I do that wrong? Oh no, I changed it to 15, okay. We can see time is set at 18, which is what we did with the environment editor. Let's change that to be 15 to represent 3 o'clock p.m. and save the file. Now, we can obviously see that the level did not update in the editor as it was left open. Just click on File, Open, and select the level. We can see that the level has the proper time of day settings now. Let's move on to our third option, via code. Create a new script and call it Time of Day. Double click on In the on gameplay start method, yeah. we are going to write a single line. via code. Create a new script and call it time of day. Double click on the script to open it up in Visual Studio. And Oops, need to zoom in. Via code. Create a new script and call it time of day. Double click on the script to open it up in Visual Studio. In the on gameplay start method, we are going to write, oh no you don't, copy, zoom out, 
paste. Wait before you finish loading. There we go. In the on gameplay start method, we are going to write a single line of code. Write engine dot console dot execute string. This tells the engine that we are going to execute a console command to it. This method has three ways you can use. Such wordiness will silence the execution of the command from the logs. Defer execution set to true means that it will execute the command on the next frame. Set to false will execute the command immediately. Good information for the average user to know, I should think. Add a string in the parameter of the method with the value being e underscore time of day. Add a space and write 24. We are specifying the time of day will be at 24 or midnight. In the environment editor, it will show up as 2359. Go back to the CryEngine editor window and click on Create Object. Select Empty Entity and drag and drop it anywhere in your level. Select that entity and click Add Component and select Select Empty Entity and drag and drop it anywhere in your level. Select that entity and click Add Component and select our Time of Day script to add to it. Now, obviously, the time of day will not uh, Zoom in again. Feel free to ask any questions, guys. Sorry, not being now, connected. obviously, the time of day will not shift yet as the code has not been executed. So click on the play button to execute the method. You should see the same result as what I have here. Immediately on pressing the play button, the drive shifts from 3 p.m. to midnight. You can even exit from play mode and the results will still be the same. In C++, you would have to close the editor for any change. Yay! It lines up! Open the project directory for C++ project created. Where you begin, right-click on it and select Generate Solution. When asked, click OK on Generate for Visual Studio 2017 with 64-bit build options. Navigate inside of the Solutions folder. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like I said, this is the most boring part of the whole video. Okay, there we go. Uh, another section to cut. Yay! Scroll down to the process event method in the player.c++ file. Go to the 
entity underscore event underscore start underscore during page underneath a revised add g environment member. Now I need to copy this part because I made a boo boo. Wow, did I just really say made a boo boo? <laughs> <coughs> nice. Add G environment member arrow operator key console member arrow operator execute string if the string parameter is executed E underscore time of day with space in between and space and four. This tells the game environment to use the console variable to execute the string specified, which will change the time of day. Insert still image. 59. Or like 59 PM. Open the C project in the Cry Engine editor and load the levels. You will see that the level currently has the time of day set to 12 o'clock. Exit from the Cry Engine. There we go, we'll cut that down. And load the levels. You will see that the level currently has the time of day set to 12 o'clock. Exit from the Cry Engine editor. Full Visual Studio process and current build. Depending on your system and the number of threads that can handle simultaneously, it will determine how long it will take to build the project. Open the Cry Engine editor up again. And load the levels. Press the play button and the time of day again. Oh. In the flow graph tab in properties. Nope. Now we can move on to the last, but certainly not least method. Open the cry engine editor up again and load the levels. Press There we go. Copy that, paste it. Cut, cut. Open the Cry Engine editor up again and load the levels. Press the play button and the time of day again. Update to 1359 or 1159 p.m. Hey, Coburn, are you still in the stream? Save and exit from the C++ project and open the C Sharp project back up. Oh, God damn it. Just copy that. Boom. We'll cut 
copy that, do that. We'll pull up the C sharp project. Not much. Are you enjoying the stream? Save and exit from the C plus plus project. Ten seconds. There we go. Now we can move on to the last, but certainly not the least method. I would be remiss to include how to do it in Flowgraph, even though project has covered it in their tutorial. For the sake of covering all bases, I must do it here. There we go. And insert still image. First things first, remove the script we created for handling time of day from the entity it was attached to. The editing is the most boring part, I swear to God. But it's the least eventful one. Speaking of which, I haven't saved in a while, so I'll save the project. Since that automatically opened for me, CryEngine, Tools, Print Screen. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, but I like mine to feel a little bit more professional, you know? I feel that uh, adding editing makes it a little bit more professional. Plus, it's a bit easier when you're doing gaming. You don't really have to edit that too much. Or at all, really. All right, so now I need Untitled 3 to go there. Tab in Properties, select Open Instructional Save button. Click on Tools and Flowgraph to open the Flowgraph Editor window. Select your entity in the Graph section of the Flowgraph Editor window. Now we can add our node. The first node to add start node. To do this, right click in the graph and select add start node. Now we need a time of day node to be added. Right click in the graph and highlight add node. Look for and highlight time and then select time of day. Put a line from output in the game start node to set time in the time of day node. Click on the fourth update and in the properties tab in the top right, put a check mark to set it to true. The last Oop. Insert still image there. Click on time and set it to be eight or eight o'clock AM. Click on file and save all external graphics. 
click on the play button and you will see the sky update once again. What's up, dude? And now for the next part, which is Photoshop. Yay, we are almost done. And it's only taken me three hours from start to finish. That's actually not too bad. All right, so now, new. Um, one oh two four seven sixty eight. I don't care. Uh, text. Um, I should probably change that to a more pronounced color. Um, let's do a dark red. Oh, god damn it. Uh, list Ethan. Next up would be Rumi Rooms. Matt Coburn. And Kupala. And I think I can make the size a bit bigger. Let's do 36. I like that. And let's change the font. Mm. There we go. Save as PNG Patreon. I hope you found this video useful, no matter how you were subscribing. I want to give a there it is. Boom. And then Patreon. Right there. And then we can do size and position. And we can go near. There we go. And the last and final touch is the intro goes at the end. So let's rectify that and make it so that you know how to do this multiple ways. Uh oh. Highlight everything there. Zoom in and boom. There are four ways we can change the time. There we go. Successful save project. And now we can export movie. As uh, MPEG 4, time of day tutorial. Good, 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 okay. We did it, boys! And how long is this gonna actually take to render? That's the question. Alright, so while that. 30 minutes, 
Well, it's probably going to take an hour. I am not streaming. <laughs> oh, 20 minutes. I'm not streaming that build process. Um, But, you know what I can do? I can make the thumbnail. So, open. Data. Thumbnail template by JJ, the editor. All right. So this is time of day settings. Oops. Cry engine. Background. Uh, place. Link to file. Backgrounds. Boom. Save as. Desktop. Time of day. Settings. PNG. Save. Boom. And there we go. Oh, wow. Ten minutes. We have successfully recorded the audio, recorded the video twice, edited, or did the editing, and then rendered a video in the style of Game Dev Made Easy. And we also made a thumbnail. High five! Alright, so that covers the topic of the stream, so any questions, comments, concerns, or jokes you got in mind, share them now, because I got like 10, 20, 30 minutes to spare to do absolutely nothing. Ugh. Yeah, you can see why I typically watch YouTube while I'm doing the editing portion. Even though it extends the uh, entire time by, like, a day. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> but yeah, the, the hardest part is actually lining up the audio with the uh, video to have it sync up as closely as possible. You know, I'm actually curious. How many total viewers do I have on YouTube, Twitch, and DLive? Shut up, phone. Let's see, I have two people watching on YouTube. What about my channel on DLive? Oh, sorry. Rush Hammer, I totally did not see your messages. <laughs> so let me go ahead and read what uh, Rush Hammer said. Uh, Rush Hammer, hey, sorry for the delay. Had to get login to work. He donated two lemons on the live. Sorry, didn't notice it was showing up. And then he also said, that's what you call a fuck up. I once spent three weeks studying for the wrong test. <laughs> nice. And then, silence, I execute you. In reference to my silence, I kill you comment. Um, let me see. What about Twitch? The Delop Jenny. What about Jenny? Jenny, I got your number. I'm a terrible singer.
So, do you guys actually want me to stream more often like this? Like, just recording and editing? Or do you guys want to see the entire process from research phase all the way to completion? Ginny Warts. Oh, Ginny the Warts. Nice, you got me. Because if you guys want to see me smash my head on the keyboard when trying to figure stuff out, uh, I can definitely do that. Especially when it comes to CryEngine. Not gonna lie. There are times when <laughs> regarding your vehicle's warranty. <laughs> So currently with CryEngine, I'm working on trying to do uh, procedural generation. It should be easy, but for some reason, every bit of code I've written has been fail-tastic. D Dilluff, for sure, lol. Cry makes me cry. Yes, yes, it does. It makes me cry too sometimes. But I love it. Me too. Not gonna lie. Especially when you figure out that solution to the problem. You feel a greater sense of... Accomplishment. With Unity, it's just like... Hey, it works. Cool. Ooh. Gonna love that shit. Oh, referencing... uh. From research phase all the way to end, or the procedural generation. Yay. Procedural generation knowledge gets me going. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be anything super advanced. It's just more going to be along the lines of, okay, I have this cube. I want to spawn 10 in a grid. And then I'm going to expand upon that to do grid-based movement. And hopefully get the foundations for setting up for a tactical RPG. And then create either a template for it in CryEngine or actually build a demo. I haven't decided yet. One step at a time though. First I gotta get the spawning to work right. And then it'll be figuring out how I want to handle the camera. Yes, grid-based movement like Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, that's one of the uh, harder things. I guess I should also take a look to see... DLive and Periscope are having trouble with restream chat. I can understand that DLive is relatively new, but Periscope really needs fixing. Uh, yeah, that is absolutely correct. Let's see, let's take a look over at the Sid Alpha Discord server in game development. Uh, you get access to the blah blah blah. Epic isn't ruining the PC market. Steam lacks of curation poor games and porn games and asset flips is showing Steam in a bad light as well as their 30% royalties for nothing alongside black market key sites like G2A and Kingwin, which really don't help. But this is the development chat in Discord based on game news, and from what I can see, most developers here don't care as long as they get to make and play cool shit. 
Uh, that's not true. There's many of us developers that are just like... I already have a... Ivan already has an RPG thing going with Chris Dulles. Fucking game dev maybe. Hey, it finished rendering. Uh, Chris Dulles is not uh, tactical or grid based. His is more kind of in the veins of Crisis 1 a little bit. But I'm also building mine in C Sharp versus C++. So it's a different side of things. And I can delete all of this from my desktop. I like to keep a uh, clean desktop and deleting all of that is how I do that. I can also close CryEngine. Um, oh yeah, quit. But, you know what, let's take a look over at Crystallis. Just to be sure. And again, no audio for some reason from the YouTube. I do believe Crystallis. Um, do 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 do. Skimming through, okay, he's just showcasing a lot of the code. On geometry restate, reset state, uh, it's that light term, blah, 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 attachment, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned tactical RPG, like a tactical RPG template such as uh, in the same veins as Final Fantasy Tactics and a lot of those older games. Uh, even if they were in 2D or 3D, it would still basically be the same. It's like you can also think of, uh, crap, what is it? Um, help me out, Coburn. Um, where is Roy from? Um, Roy is from... Um, uh... Roy smash... Fire Emblem. There we go. So think of uh, the movement system that's similar to Fire Emblem. Not the exact combat, but that style of Shining Force, Roy. Roy, Marth, you know, them. Yeah, Fire Emblem. Yeah, so it's a completely different uh, aesthetic. Ha ha, Coburn, just throwing names out there. And I thought you were the Nintendo aficionado. Ooh, I used the big word, aficionado. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I was thinking of uh, the uh, side scroll shooter that had a similar name. Was that Radiant? It was Shining something, I believe, or 
Was it radiant something? Oh, trust me, my first implementation in CryEngine will definitely be very janky. <laughs> but it will serve as a proof of fucking concept that works with the engine. Because if you look at the templates that are available in CryEngine... Hold on, let me pull it back up. But let's take a look at uh, some of the templates that you get available. You get VR with schematic or blank. C sharp, you get rolling ball or third person. C plus plus, you get rolling ball, isometric, first person, third person, side scroll, top down, and plugin. So I want to create the grid based movement uh, template for people to base off of and hopefully get it actually integrated into the engine that's my goal so that way I have something that I can go I made this and it was actually put into an official capacity put into something in an official capacity but the next a uh, Unity tutorial I'm working on will be... Oh, I have three of them. Huh? Oh. The next Unity tutorial I'll be working on is actually a comparison. That'll be a comparison between the network solutions offered for Unity. So, you, so I'll be looking at Photon, Mirrored, and UNet. Comparing how you set things up and how to get things going how easy it is to work with things of that nature I know one of those Cur Coburn is actually going to be like very very critical of isn't that right Coburn Which do I like more, C++ or C Sharp, and why? <sighs> Both languages I like. I'm more proficient and comfortable with C Sharp. So my default is typically to go to C Sharp. That's how I base everything off of when it comes to development. <laughs> you know what? That's probably... You know what? That's what I'm going to fucking name the video. Make Unity Networking Great Again. 2019. <laughs> People are just going to go, what? Is this guy a Trump supporter? I don't know if I want to watch it. <laughs> Aussie politics be damned. <laughs> or American politics. Or any politics in general be damned. Political opinions. Everyone has one, just like they have assholes. <laughs> I just have to remember to actually put that there. Because I'm used to going, comparison, or blah, 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 comparison. You know, I was also thinking of doing something else at some point. Which I think would actually be really, really funny. And that would be, come on, come on, Epic Launcher, you're so damn slow. The Witness is available for free. Launch Unreal Engine. Oh yeah, I still have to do a uh, 
comparison of 2D between Flat Red Ball, uh, Unity in 2D, and Construct 3. So many tutorials that I have to do. And comparisons. But, God, I hate how slow Unreal Engine is to load. And you know what the worst part is? That's not the correct one. Thirty two gigs of RAM. Ryzen seven twenty seven hundred at three point four gigahertz. I'm also running the ten sixty six gig. Unreal should not be this slow. It should be blazing. I have, let's see, Ryzen 7 2700 has 12 threads per core, or 12 threads altogether. But what I want to do is at some point, I want to take either the twin stick shooter or advanced vehicle tutorial in C++ and Blueprint and convert it over to CryEngine. I think that'd be hilarious. But that would also require me to actually use Flowgraph and C++ more. Oh yeah, I guess I should actually upload my uh, video. Oops. Spending so much time just chatting and not even uploading. Uh, renders. Uh, we are looking for time of day tutorial. There we go. And we're going to add our custom thumbnail. Boom. Wait, did I do? Oh, shit. God damn it. You know what I just did? Remember when I said I was deleting all that uh, extra shit from my desktop? I uh, deleted the thumbnail I made. Uh, let me see. Let me. I have updated my BIOS to get full advantage of my RAM. Uh, I don't want to break it. Yeah, be very careful about uh, overclocking your timings, especially if your system doesn't have the proper cooling for it. Coburn, yeah, that's one reason I never really wanted to switch to Unreal. Load times are unreal. <laughs> yes, bad pun there. Good pun. You'll be fine as long as you are super careful with your BIOS updates and your board is the same as the BIOS for that board. Yeah. Alrighty, gonna do it tomorrow before I... Remodeling my office slash bedroom. Gonna be starting fresh as hell. New channel, new everything. And if you're in my Discord server, definitely share your channel. Share your content. Share everything. Uh, if you're not currently in the Discord, a link to my server is in the description. Um, What was I? Oh yeah, I need Photoshop because I was a dumbass. <sighs> this is what you get for not paying attention to what you were doing. Um, open recent. God damn it. Open. Data thumbnail. Thumbnail, template, there we go. Alright, uh, 
try engine. I think that's what I put. Time of day settings. And then we also need to change the background. Relink to file. Backgrounds. And I chose the waterfall one. There. Save as desktop PNG one done definitely will be in the discord once I get everything set up hopefully my mic stand comes in the mail by tomorrow yeah a mic stand is definitely a plus and a must have there we go. Change time of day settings in hashtag cry engine tutorial. Add to playlist cry engine. There we go. Um, nothing else in DLive, so, boom. So now we're just waiting the remaining, however much time it takes to upload, and, oh yeah, I guess I should definitely keep streaming to showcase the uh, final results of everything I do. The script I made, as I said before, I used that to generate my uh, closed captionings. So I'll showcase how I do that as well. How do you go about keeping all your projects, software, and stuff well sorted? Let me show. So, as you can see, my data drive, dev projects, or dev underscore projects, has folders specific to each engine. So then when you go over to CryEngine, all the folders for everything I work with, go dot, nothing because I deleted it. Lumberyard, nothing because it's so slow. Repos has everything I upload to or download from GitHub. Rust currently learning a little bit of Rust. Unity, all these projects. Unreal Engine, Visual Studio projects by themselves. Zinco Engine, I haven't worked with it in a little bit. But that's how I go about keeping everything organized. Dev software, I actually offloaded to my data drive in a specific folder. So as you can see, Construct 3, CryEngine, Lumberyard, Unity, Unreal, and Zenko. And then Dev Assets, I actually have to reorganize it because I have things in itch.io. Uh, yeah, I have to go through and reorganize all my assets, which includes organizing between Models, props, environments, particles, whether it's for 3D, whether it's for 2D, everything. And then, of course, my dev books, which are, again, organized accordingly. Same thing, or well, code files, it's just all the code files put in one folder. And then videos organized accordingly. Dev projects. Uh, Stricken is a game that someone was having me rewrite from the ground up, but they fell under some hard times, so, or some financial issues, so that's been put on hold. Uh, so these are just little 
extra projects to look into with research. Like this is a header file in C++. Like, okay, what are they doing for making checkers, stuff like that. And then A star search, reading on how someone else implemented it. See what I can do to improve it or rewrite it to better fit my style of programming. A new text document. That is something. Oh, I was trying to do click the move there and it sucked. And then I can actually delete that. But yeah, that's how I go about organizing everything. I just create a specific folder for it and then do subfolders. Oh wow, it's already just about done processing. And then when it comes to keeping tabs of tutorial ideas. I have an Excel document for that as well as a Trello. So I use both of those interchangeably. Uh, oh yeah. Time of day. Change time of day. Boom. Now we'll publish. Turn the editing. Now, why is it stuck processing? Oh, yeah, I can close that. No. I can close that. Um, why is it still processing? YouTube Studio, and I hate the beta. I hate how it defaults to it now. What's your opinion of Godot? Uh, Godot is decent. It's, it needs to mature a little bit more, especially for their C-sharp side. I don't like their custom language. Okay, let's go to Creator Studio Classic. Overall, Godot definitely has a lot of potential though. So now I can do subtitles CC. Add new subtitles, English. Transcribe and auto sync. And then I just paste the entire script I wrote for the tutorial right in there. So while it's setting the timings, I then add my cards. Um, and then promote that playlist, um, in screen we'll have sub subscribe and then also most recent upload. 
actually I should change that to be best for viewer and we'll save that now we're just waiting on the subtitles to finish going and then the video is completely done settings and that's only a 12 minute video after all of that that's not bad at all we go add the poll and then drafts publish and this video is complete now all I got to do is share it across social media so copy Twitter Facebook LinkedIn, Reddit, Gab, Mines, Boom. Um, and then I need CryEngine developers. go publish that post uh, gab same thing and mines post Okay, good. And now for Reddit. Um, game dev. Boom. I should probably add a player to that. Edit player. Tutorial. Apply. There we go. And there we go. Everything has been put to be live. All right, so I think that completes the entire stream, actually. So from start to finish, everything, which includes the upload process, three hours and 41 minutes is the time frame. Not bad. 
Alright guys, this has been Jesco from Game Dev Made Easy, and I'm gonna go get breakfast. <laughs> Later.